Hello everyone and welcome back to Unspoken Stories. This is the official podcast promoting the Beyond the Walls anthology, the short story collection written by YSJ students. And just to remind everyone, the book launch is on the May 17th in the SU upstairs lounge at 6.30pm. That's correct, Rachel? That is correct, Ben. (laughs) (laughs) Also, just to say, I am here today with producer Rachel and... Erin Blaney. (laughs) Full naming yourself. (laughs) Full naming myself. Who is the team leader of the editing team? Mm. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, Erin, like Ben says, is the team leader for the editing team for the Beyond the Walls anthology, and she's here with us today to talk about her journey to York St John, the process um, that she's been involved with with the anthology, and a bit of chat. Bit of chat. Bit of chat. <laughs> so Erin, introduce yourself. Hello, I'm Erin, second year student. A uh, team leader for the Beyond the Walls project for the editorial team. And I'm also Rachel's friend, so it's just nice to chat with her. <laughs> <laughs> the room we're in is the size of a five pound <laughs> so we've never been closer, no. both metaphorically and physically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so thank you for having me. I'm excited to talk about the project because I'm very proud of it and the work that all the teams are doing. Yeah. It's been fun, hasn't it? It's, it's been really fun. So fast. It has, it's crazy. So tell us a little bit about how you got to York St John. So I came here straight from college. I went to a college separate from my school because I didn't have one. So yeah, that kind of... I had a teacher there who really supported my writing, which was cool. I don't think I would have come to uni if it wasn't for that because the whole my whole experience in school, I was like, I don't want to go to uni. What's even the point? It's just wasting your money. And then this teacher was like, you're actually quite good at this, Erin. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> Anything you say. Um, so Erin yeah. is a certified genius. I'm really sorry to interrupt, <laughs> but she is literally the smartest person I know. True. Like, she is smashing it out of the park. Mm. And yeah, there, there should be no room for uh, negative self-belief in Erin Blaney's life because she is so, so, so talented. <laughs> Thank you. I am a sick of fan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so then I, literally in like the summer before the September, I was like, oh, okay, yeah, maybe I'll apply. So now I'm here. And I'm here in York. I'm here in York. So where are you from, Erin? I'm from Derby. Shout out um, Derby. Shout out Derby. Shout out Derby Big Football up. Club. Is that the name of the team? Yeah, Derby County. Derby County. Yeah. Who are Derby County. Derby County, <laughs> if you will. <laughs> if you will. <laughs> from Derby. So it's not too far away. I came here because my parents came here a lot when they were first going out and then, like, growing up, I've come on holiday here a lot. So yeah, so it's like kind of it was from a city that was familiar enough, but still like kind of far away. But yeah. What made you choose to do the uh, joint honours, creative writing and English literature? It was the enrichment at my college was creative writing, so it wasn't an actual, it wasn't part of the literature course. So and that was she was the teacher who I had for that was who said that I should maybe do this, I should like carry on with it. So that's why I wanted to do creative writing as well because I really enjoyed it, even though it was only for like half an hour a week in break time mm. um, and I've just always really loved literature it's the only thing I'm really good at <laughs> I'm pretty rubbish at but everything nice else when you kind of well, personally for me when I looked at just like the English literature course yeah, I found it really daunting one I had like 12 years out of education before going back to university and two like it seemed like too heavy on the like analysis and essay kind of side of things so I kind of really wanted a bit of a split mm. like the opportunity to do things creatively yeah and the way the joint honours degree at York St John works is that one semester you'll do two literature modules and a creative writing one and then the following semester it'll flip so you'll do two creative writing modules and then one literature one so I think the split makes it like a lot more even mm. and a lot more fun you get to develop skills on both sides of things and I think you, loving literature is one thing, but actually being able to stretch those muscles yourself, um, if you if you're that way inclined, I think is really helpful. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think being a good reader and a good writer, they go hand in hand, yeah, don't they? Be a literary powerhouse. <laughs> <laughs> but they always say, and like we talk about it, like with script writing as well. Like the mm. more that you read, the better a writer you become. Mm. The more that you watch, the better. Do you know what I mean? Like all yeah. these things feed into it, and I think it's just a bit more interesting than just doing a purely essay based degree because mm. I think that can be quite um be quite exhausting just constantly kind of using the analysis part of your brain yeah. rather than getting to use like the creative part of your brain mm. as well I feel like it's quite easy to hide behind essays and that kind of academic writing mm. style I think when you're writing creatively you kind of are putting a bit of yourself out there and mm. it kind of 
yeah, just every once in a while having to be brave, I think, is a good mix. And also having to reflect critically on your mm. own writing. <laughs> That's, I'd never done that before, like having to write about your own process. Like you get so used to trying to write about somebody else's process or what you think their process was. Or, you have to you write know. about your own. Yeah. I still think it's a bit hand in, you know what I mean? It's like they only put that in there just to like, oh, it's not just doing creative writing, you have to yeah. do some actual like, reading. Like, you're just more doing it to like, yeah. you, I think anyone who does creative reflection is just like making stuff up on the spot. A little bit, yeah. And you've got to kind of <laughs> prove that you have actually engaged with the materials that they are providing you as well, because mm-hmm. with creative writing, um, it's not so much set text, is it, throughout those modules, it's kind of like, like recommended, week, yeah. yeah, recommended reading and then like some theory based stuff and then at the end it's like reminder you were meant to be reading all along <laughs> and looking at these theories and applying to them to your own work and now write a 3,000 word source good okay. luck but yeah so we'd like to talk to you about the Beyond the Walls project mm-hmm. which it's gone so fast but also feels like we started it three years ago yeah. at the same time I don't know if that's just because of the change in seasons mm-hmm. but yeah so talk to us about what you thought when the project was first kind of like presented to us um, as the task for the semester and also the theme this year is unspoken so take it away Erin. Take it away. <laughs> <laughs> I think when the when I was first looking at the course on Moodle I was like what on earth is this? I was like you have to be in teams? <laughs> What are, we, what are we making? What is this? <laughs> yeah, and then when Rob explained it, it just really appealed to me. And I wanted, I knew I wanted to be, like, involved in it. Because I don't normally put myself forward for, like, leadership things. But I also, like, I knew that if I was involved in this and I didn't have, like, some amount of control, it would drive me a bit mad. Because <laughs> <laughs> I knew I'd want to be, like, I'd want to know what was going on all the time. Yeah, not in, like, a controlling way, because, I mean, I hope that, the people on my team would attest to the fact that I haven't been controlling <laughs> but just yeah just knowing what's um what's going on yeah and I think that this project is one of the best things that YSJ do I think the change that I've seen like in our course mates I don't know if you feel the same but like having that bit of responsibility mm. I think is so important um and being able to be creative like you guys doing this podcast every week and knowing that people are going to listen to it yeah knowing that like it's yeah (laughs) it's on you if it goes wrong but also like when you do well like you're praised for it because you've done a really good job yeah the feedback has been like i just surprisingly good yeah i just blush (laughs) hide like i I can't handle someone telling me that i'm good at something but yeah you have done a really good job, like, genuinely. It's just a little segue into praising the blogs and podcasting <laughs> team. But, yeah, I feel like there's a lot of focus on the other two teams because maybe it's, like, the deadlines are more immediate. Mm. But I think you guys have just kind of, like, quietly excelled at doing oh, your bit. Compared to last year, I think we're doing quite all right because they only did, like, a, a podcast and no blogs and we're kind of doing <laughs> yeah. a bit of both. Yeah. So you said that you chose to be the leader of the editing team. Yeah, they were... Because it's a really big team. I think most people... Oh, I was. I was going to yeah. join, like... <laughs> okay, there's way too many people. It's like yeah, and then I had to go it was mad. Uh, I think there was there's eighteen people. Yeah, and I think maybe six or seven of us put our names forward to be team leader. Wow. Mm. Um, and we had to do like a little pitch, and I went first, and it was completely unprepared, and I said something. It was like just so incoherent and <laughs> and daft. And then I was like, oh well, that's all right. Do it for right. us now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think I like blacked out because I was nervous <laughs> and then I was like oh well, well that's okay I'm not going to be team leader <laughs> and then like other people went around and said their bits and then we did a vote and then we got it back and Rob said Erin and I was like are you messing <laughs> I was like, please count again but yeah so it was unexpected and I definitely had a lot of imposter syndrome mm-hmm. when I first started I was like this is this is a complete accident and <laughs> yeah <laughs> um but no I'm really glad that I am team leader. I've really, really enjoyed the process. Yeah, it's been great receiving all the work. It's been really interesting. We've had some great pieces, especially from the postgraduates. Mm. Um, obviously, being like that bit older, that bit more experience. Um, some of the pieces have been really strong, but also from the undergrads. Like, mm. there hasn't been anything that's been like unpublishable. Like, it's all, it's all been really interesting. Um, so when you first opened up the call for submissions, did you have an influx to begin with or was it quite a slow burn in terms of getting these submissions in? Could definitely, mm-hmm. yeah, definitely a slow burn. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we had. Uh, I was worried for a while that we wouldn't have enough pieces and that we were going to have to like get people from the course to submit stuff mm-hmm. themselves. 
yeah I think we had there was maybe like two weeks where we had like six mm. and I was like it's closed in a week like we're gonna have absolutely nothing but then yeah that final week we had loads the final few days especially mm. yeah there were loads what's the split between like forms so obviously short stories poetry mm. what else has been submitted? it's pretty even actually between poetry and prose which I wasn't expecting but it is pretty much like half and half um, yeah, which is interesting, and it's been good when we're because um, we chose to do the layout, the order ourselves mm. instead of doing it just by like alphabet or whatever. Mm. So it's been good to have that mix. So it's been um, yeah. We also had some illustrations sent in because we opened the call oh, yeah. for artwork as well. Yeah. So it's been good. Yeah. So talk us through. You say like previous years have just done it in an alphabetical order in terms of the submissions, like titles. Talk us through why you chose to do it the way that you're doing it this year. So I think we wanted, I wanted it to be like a tailored reading experience. So like it's, some thought has gone into the order when you're reading it, like what pieces go together thematically or maybe contrast each other in that way, um, form, like we're talking about. Yeah, I think it was um, Angelina, Harry and Sophia who did the order. Oh, I don't wow. know if they're listening, but shout out to them. <laughs> yeah, they worked on that for us, which was really good. Yeah, so hopefully when people are reading this, they can tell that like, some thought has gone into the reading experience. More yeah. immersive, would you say, the experiences? Yeah, just just more considered, because some of the pieces uh, dealt with similar th- themes. We had quite a lot of like horror fiction, which is cool. So yeah, we didn't want them, because if it's alphabetically or whatever, like it's purely accidental mm. what pieces go together. So when we decided on the theme, we did it as the entire cohort so everyone was kind of throwing out ideas as to what it potentially could be what was your reaction um when you first heard the theme unspoken and what does that mean to you i think for me it means voices that you wouldn't normally hear from in literature and fiction i think that applies to our age group specifically and to students because there it isn't often that you would read an anthology purely from people aged you know 19 20 to like you know mid-20s whatever and everyone their their debut work like it's the first time these people have been published in physical form anyway so I think it's just a great opportunity to hear from those voices because you definitely wouldn't normally like get that opportunity to be published in that way but also in terms of the unspoken voices and the pieces themselves we've had there's been quite a lot of challenging topics or taboo kind of subjects so there's been stuff about like body image uh, mental health and like interesting perspectives not always human um, narrators which I think is interesting yeah I think it really speaks to the individual human experience that we can all hear the same word and that can connote so many different things mm. for so many different people like we've spoken about it at length on the podcast with guests mm-hmm. just to each other when we've been planning stuff and I think we all do have a slightly different take on it and I think the, the take you can have on it when you're just talking to your friends or to your colleagues or whatever is then going to be a little bit different to the take when you're actually intentionally creating yeah. a piece of work to that I'm sure that some people who submitted maybe already had works in progress that could fit with the theme but some people probably submitted finding out the theme and then working to yeah. that almost as a brief so if you were to just off the top of your head if you were to write something what do you think that would turn out to be? Mm-hmm. That's a good question as well. There's been a few pieces about kind of words left unsaid, which I think is really interesting. So kind of exploring maybe what would have happened if you'd had that conversation or the kind of consequences of not speaking about things, mm-hmm. which I think is always interesting. So you are obviously on the editing team, you're the team leader but would you say that your perspective on editing as a process has changed at all from the start of the module to where we're at now? Mm, I think at the start we were all quite nervous. <laughs> like we spent a lot of time on a few pieces in the first couple of weeks, just trying to get that editorial voice right, to strike the balance between being like assertive and professional, but also like kind, mm. because it's a big thing for people to submit their work to be like critiqued it's brave definitely. it is definitely yeah you don't want to look mean it's time yeah. to change things that they've obviously put a lot of effort into yeah definitely but then also sometimes like you need to be clear what you're saying mm. like you can't be overly nice you have to, it has to be clear what you are suggesting it has to be like actionable mm. but yeah so 
And then as it went on, we kind of got into a routine as a team, like I'd assign pieces, they would get it done, and then we'd send out the emails. Um, yeah, so the process sped up the more we got used to it, mm. definitely. How did you manage a whole team of 18 people? Like, did you like divvy out the work between smaller groups within the team? Yeah, we kind of, um, I signed pieces usually based on, once we had like a, a lot of pieces to work with, I signed them based on what I knew people read and write. Um, so for example, Ethan, our friend Ethan, mm. who did the introduction for the podcast. Yeah, the baseline. The baseline Ethan. I know he likes a lot of like horror, kind of unusual, mm. intense stuff. So I gave them all the <laughs> all the really like dark, twisted stuff. Which yeah. And then um Angelina, I know reads a lot of romance. Mm. Um so she got some of that. Laura is very into Inside Number Nine and we had a piece that was it read like the plot of an Inside Number Nine. Wow. Um and also creative non fiction, so mm. she handled a lot of that. Yeah. So it's good. We I I kinda it being a big team it was good because it never meant that one person's workload was mm. like unmanageable. Has your perspective on what the term editor means changed from when we first started this to now? Hmm. Yeah, I don't know how much it has. I would be interested to know how an actual editor works and how, like how they respond to people's submissions. Because we've been doing it in like leave comments on someone's work, send it back to them, then like open up that dialogue mm. between author and editor. Um, and it hasn't been individual either. Like, it's just been the editorial team. Mm. So you've just been of, anonymous. I was going to say, you've anonymized it yeah. from your end. And I think that might help, especially when it when you've never done anything like mm. that before. You maybe have more confidence to be truthful, but truthful, sorry, but while, like Ben says, while being kind. Yeah. With it coming from like a blanket email address rather than it having your name at the bottom yeah. of it. And like, you know, because then people. I think especially creatives, we take things personally whether Very we touchy. want yeah. to or not, <laughs> and whether you know it's part of a process and whether there's professionalism or not. Like, if it's something really close to you and true to you, mm. you're gonna take any criticism. I think it's why yeah, people are so definitely. scared to like criticize during yeah. workshops and stuff like mm. that, because then there's a, like a face. Yeah, like, that's, like, yeah, definitely. <laughs> Yeah, a few people on the team have said like they're now terrified to submit to be on the walls, <laughs> but no, I, yeah, I think we have been it, overall. Our feedback has been very positive, mm. and most of the feedback we've got from authors has also been it's mm. been like thank you for picking up on this. Mm. For some people, if it's maybe a piece that they wrote a while ago and they've just like edited slightly, they're like, mm. thank you, like I completely forgotten that I used to write like this. <laughs> mm. Well, Rob said when we kind of were first splitting into these teams however many weeks ago it was now he said you know a lot of people want to become an editor they do this kind of degree because that's the kind of job that they want to end up in mm. and you know there's so much more to publishing than that you know when he first showed us kind of like the life cycle of it like yeah. thinking about all the different job roles and he said you know these editing jobs at the big five publishers are hard to get you can't just walk into them mm. but here are all these other avenues where you could potentially build up to that but actually you could find another part of the process that you also really enjoy yeah. or that actually is better suited to you i think the course does that very well like showing us different Agreed. options so i know that you've said to me before like personally that like you would love to be a writer but has this module made you think actually i could get into the world of publishing in another way and write on the side and kind of have those two lives yeah definitely yeah i'm thinking about maybe applying for an internship somewhere Amazing. yeah because i have i've really loved the process mm. it's been very re rewarding i know it's kind of a cliche thing to say i hope rob's um, listening i hope rob's listening <laughs> thank you rob. <laughs> thank you rob. Love you rob um but yeah it has what's it been like talking to the actual publishers what's his name it's one guy oh yeah jamie from valley press ja jamie of valley press what's mm. it been like being cause i assume you're the, you're the one who's supposed to reach out to him being yeah. a team leader what's it been like talking to him so it's mostly it's only recently that i've been able to talk to him directly mm -hmm. it's mostly been through rob so it was at times challenging, especially when Jamie was asking for reworks of the cover, um, because like it'd go, it'd be like Ollie to me to Rob to Jamie, and then back, and it would just take quite a while. Mm. So not being able to talk to him directly at, at first was challenging at times. But yeah, but we sent off the final edits yesterday, and I emailed him directly. I felt so professional. <laughs> Be like, hello, Jamie. <laughs> so important. Like two kids in yeah. a trench coat. So yeah. I'm not <laughs>
Yeah. It's a really good segue actually into talking about the cover art. Yes. Because obviously we've talked at length on the module about how we shouldn't judge books by covers, but we absolutely do. Yeah. And how, you know, different publishing houses will maybe even have their own styles. So talk us through how your team kind of came up with the concept for the cover and how that has eventually been implemented. Mm. So we knew that we wanted to design the cover like in-house, as it were, within the team. Mm. We did it for to be more efficient with time, which is ironic because <laughs> it took so long to get something approved. <laughs> um, yeah, so Ollie, who's on the editorial team, he's designed the cover for us. And there were three major like designs. There were a few little reworks in between. But yeah, we started off with one, which was kind of like a front profile of this person and it was very like folk horror and it said I thought it was really cool it had like the word unspoken written in the design kind of secret oh, wow. um, but Jamie didn't notice <laughs> <Good job. laughs> uh, which is devastating yeah so then the feedback on that was that it was too genre specific which is fair enough because yeah there are so many genres and kinds of writing in the anthology mm. they couldn't it wouldn't be right if it looked like folk horror mm. or uncanny whatever put people off if yeah they're not into that sort of genre of yeah. writing like you say okay. um and then we had a second one which was it had like sort of uh, like mouths on they were pink and on a green background and that was to represent speaking mm-hmm. and unspoken and then jamie said that he liked the motif of the mouse but he just wanted one and it bigger and it'd be the only thing on the text so the design that we've got now is white textured background and then big set of lips <laughs> um with like a zip coming off in the mouth um and then the blurb there is a zip on the back as well oh cool so that kind of like yeah this is i think it does say like, this is a text where unspoken things are going to be spoken mm. hopefully and it kind of bridges over the dramas as well because like yeah. the, the lips it can imply romance it can yeah imply, like horror from the, mm. the the zipper that kind of thing yeah definitely i think it does it does work well um and amelie did the writing on it i should say <laughs> so talk to us about the typesetting process because honestly like not to sound ignorant but that is just not something that i would have even considered mm. like that being no, me neither. a <laughs> process even yeah no i similarly don't really have any expertise in that area so i turned to the team for that ethan again baseline ethan <laughs> um, yeah he's interested in that just outside of uni as mm. well so yeah i kind of handed that over and because the skeleton proof was such a big document Mm. um because obviously i've looked over everything myself like every uh, submission every email the skeleton proof whatever i've looked at it all but i was like i cannot typeset this myself (laughs) within the deadline so yeah so we i turned to the team and yeah it was really good we got the the font all right the titles centered all that kind of stuff there were a few pieces with specific structures um, which were challenging. Mm. Um, there's one that looks like a face, which obviously, mm. and it's speaking something. One of the lines looks like it's coming out the mouth. Mm. So obviously that had to remain as it is. Mm. Yeah, there's one where each line has to be one line, which sounds simple, <laughs> but when you're trying to format that on a page with like big margins either mm. side, then the words don't fit on. Yeah, so. I think they're uh, what has taken up most of Jamie's time as well mm. in the time since. But yeah, so he does most of, because obviously Valley Press have a house style. Mm. He's done most of that himself. We just had to make it like as good as can be. Mm. F- so his job was easier. I'm really excited to see it now. It so looks now that you've said this more, because like we obviously, our team haven't been involved in your side of the process. We've only watched from a distance yeah. like, across the classroom. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> seen from a distance, kind of heard things. Obviously, me speaking to you, mm. I've heard like little tidbits here and there about um, how it's going to be. But I think the last few weeks, it sounds like quite a lot of things have really developed. Yeah. And it's really becoming very... Yeah, real. it's kind of been like intense for a few weeks. And now we're it's just kind of waiting mm-hmm. um, and helping out other teams where we can. But yeah, I'm very excited to see the actual physical copies. It's exciting just looking at the proof. Mm. Um, Yeah, and everybody on Wednesday was getting excited because all of our names are in the back. Yeah. Um, I only spelled... Yeah, you you guys as well. Even me? Even Even you? you. Yeah. I felt bad because I spelled someone's name wrong, which is unforgivable. Was it mine? No. (laughs) Yeah, put three N's in it. (laughs) (laughs) That's like Ben with three N's. (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah, so yeah, it's got everyone's name from all the teams, which is very cool. And just a reminder, this is a real life book that you mm. will be able to purchase yeah. Yeah, you if, can you pick so, up and read if you so wish. Anywhere you want. Yeah. On the train, on the toilet, in the <laughs> car, preferably not. Not while you're driving. <laughs> yeah, you're no. In your back seat. But you might get travel sick. Maybe. Maybe, that's yeah. What, that's what I was wondering. Crack, yeah. <laughs> Crack a window and read it in the back seat. But mm. the book doesn't come with a sick bucket. No. So, uh, <laughs> no. Yeah. It'll be Use available on Amazon and Valley Press. Amazon's website. Mm. 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 The internet. Have you heard of that, Ben? I'm younger than you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised you've heard <laughs> Back in my day, we had dial up on our time computer. Okay, is there anything else that you want to discuss about the project? Uh, not really. Okay. It all seems laid out. Okay. So we have a segment at the end of our podcast now. It's Ben's favourite time. Mm-hmm. It's time for some <laughs> quick fire questions. Yay! And I wish we did video for this as well because he's looking at me like he wants to murder me right now. Such I'm fury. <laughs> Smiling on the inside. But yeah, so I won't ask Ben again what his favourite karaoke song is because he has oh, told but me what, this like three times. I don't now. know what it but is. But yeah, Erin doesn't know. It's Girls on Film by Duran Duran. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Which is a banger of a song. Yeah. Um, so Erin, Erin Blaney. Erin Blaney. Whose dad is a super fan of this podcast. Yeah. Hi, Dad. Shout out, Mark Blaney. Yay. Shout out to Mark Blaney. Erin, <laughs> um, what is your go to karaoke song? It's Disco 2000. Oh, wow. By Paul. By Paul. Amazing. Yeah. Do you have any signature moves? Any Jarvis Cocker um. <laughs> moves that you like to pull when you're doing this? No, I'm not nearly as cool. Yes, it's probably just like stumbling because I have to be quite drunk to do karaoke. Same here. So, like, falling over. Maybe a little burp into the microphone. <laughs> Are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> well, I love to do a bit of Avril Lavigne. Which one? All of them. All Her of them. entire back catalogue. I do the Avril Lavigne mega mix at karaoke. Um, Did you know she got replaced? Let's not go down this conspiracy mm. theory. <laughs> but the other day, I, fun fact, put some waterproof trousers on and I looked like Avril Lavigne circa 2001. And I wasn't mad about it. So, yeah. Okay, so what are you currently reading, watching, listening to? What mm. pop culture things have got you just Going. with some just. joy de vivre? <laughs> joy de vivre. Jo- well, however you say that phrase. <laughs> What's exciting you right joy now? De <laughs> joy de vivre. Joy de vivre. Dennis Villeneuve. <laughs> <laughs> so for uni at the moment I'm reading a book called Jane a Murder which is really interesting mm. it's a book length poem and it's about the author's auntie who was murdered oh. yeah and it's really good it's very interesting um, outside of uni I'm reading Beyond Black by Hilary Mantel because I'm slightly obsessed with Hilary Mantel have you read Mantel pieces? no see I'm not obsessed enough fake fan fake, fake <laughs> Mantel fan I've also heard great things about her work yeah so. Beyond Black is great it's mm. I'm about quarter of the way through at the moment but yeah it's very dark it's great what are the things what am i listening to what are you listening to watching um i've been listening to a show on radio six called courtney loves women with an apostrophe as in courtney love S- women, women. Uh, not just a woman called courtney do they belong loves to women. courtney love yeah. yeah they all live in her house all the women belong <laughs> to um which is really interesting it's about her life and like music that's meant a lot to her mm throughout her life are um, you a fan of Hole? I am what's your favourite Hole song? Mm, Malibu oh, mine's mm. Celebrity Skin yeah mm. what's your favourite Hole song then? I don't listen to him enough really oh. I was more Nirvana fan mm. what's your favourite Nirvana song? It smells like Teen Spirit <laughs> 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 and I can play it on guitar <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. no it have to be uh, either something in the way or never mind mm. just basic stuff nice and mm. um, what are you currently watching? I'm not very good at watching stuff that's... I, I just watch, like, the same stuff mm. over and over again Comfort to feel place. safe. <laughs> I really want to... <laughs> and even Brooklyn Nine-Nine. <laughs> I really want to watch Baby Reindeer. I've heard mm. good things. Yeah, um, the discourse on the internet, I think, yeah. is getting away with itself. Yeah, I think it's it's taken a turn. The real yeah, life... that's not right. ...like, woman that this, that this show is yeah. based on, which is kind um, of creepy. What's I've been watching... The last thing I watched at the cinema was All of Us Strangers, which, was that good? yeah, it was incredible. Yeah, that was the best film I've seen for a while, I'd say. Um, yeah. Very good. Um, what are your current reads, watches, and listens, Ben? Still reading, playing the bass with three left hands. I think I'm listening to a lot of Cabaret Voltaire. Oh, okay. Lately, there's like an early electronic, mm. like 80s, 70s, 80s, 90s mm. type band. Like group, they do a lot of synth stuff. 
Mm. That's pretty much it, really. I haven't been watching much else. Not watching anything. Have you finished um, Twin Peaks? Twin Peaks. Twin Peaks. How? <laughs> <laughs> the last episode. <laughs> we need to wait until we watch Fire Walk with Me, the film, because you can't watch season three until you've watched Fire Walk with Me. I feel like Fraser told me about that. Mm-hmm. And that I need to watch that as well because I still haven't watched Twin Peaks. Season one, season two, Firewalk, Firewalk. with me, then season three. Got ya, got ya. You absolutely cannot watch Firewalk with me before the show because it spoils it. Okay, got ya. I'm still reading Generation X, which is a very <laughs> short book, but I am a very slow reader. So yeah, still reading that. I currently am also without the mental capacity for new things. So I'm rewatching New Girl at the moment. Mm. So obviously, listening to Taylor Swift. God forbid, I'm not doing that every single day of my life. <laughs> I will not hear any judgment. <laughs> yeah. Any further questions, gang? Have you got questions for us, Erin? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, any questions Ooh. for us? Are you going to miss it doing this podcast? No. <laughs> Ryan Sorry, nodded. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, kind of. It's obviously, whenever I'm on, which now appears to be every week, mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, it's producer Rachel because I am the team leader for our team and I just thought I'd be here as like a producer just kind of getting everything together keeping everyone on task sitting on bins sitting, sitting on, on bins, sitting on bins but um, initially I just looked to you for any like oh have I forgotten this yeah. Rachel what, what am I missing because I would have like the notes and I'd have like all the yeah like all the maybe logistics stuff whatever and then eventually but when I hosted well yeah yeah obviously I ended up hosting the episode with Adam and Joe uh, which I won't ever stop talking about I'm sorry you shouldn't ever stop talking about if you about are it. listening huge. to this Adam and Joe I love you. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so ever since then, and I got really good feedback on that, so that kind of increased my confidence to speak up a little bit more as well. Mm. And then on the other episodes, you guys, like you say, you've kind of turned to me for, like, one, my input, and two, reminders on things and stuff. So I've really yeah. grown Welcome to enjoy is charisma. It. Mm. <laughs> so we don't want to make you feel left out. A face for the radio. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I've, I've really enjoyed it. I'm probably not going to miss like it taking up a chunk of time Mm. every week especially when we're getting close to assignment season but yeah it's made me think personally I'm capable of doing it so could I do it on my own one day or with other people one day outside of uni yeah like we didn't really know what we were going to do with it we kind of just came up with ideas for episodes Mm -hmm. and then it's kind of naturally followed a bit of a format we found early on that you really enjoy interviewing guests you're really good at it you put the time in with your research you're really articulate and like with Rob obviously you had similar interests and then we've hopefully got without spoiling anything we hope we have another interview coming up before the end of term which Ben's really excited for yeah so yeah I think yeah and then just adding like little bits at the end having a bit more of an informal chat mm. having a joke about stuff um, yeah I've loved it really I think you've done a really good job thank you mm. thank you that's alright appreciate that <laughs> yeah do you want to wrap it up Ben yeah with your uh, ends yeah, yeah. <laughs> just the official stuff again the book launch is on May 17th at 6.30 in the upstairs lounge at the SU uh, we'll all be there including you Aaron yes I, hope. I will be there uh, buy the book read it do whatever you want with it <laughs> <laughs> thanks for listening see you next time thank you bye, bye.